Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited because this week we're going to be doing a week-long reading vlog. It's officially spring break for me, so I thought for spring break, since I have nothing to do, nowhere to go, I'd really focus on reading this week and I would do a fun little reading vlog. So my audiobook that I'm currently listening to is Legend Born by Tracy Dion. I'm almost done with this. I have like half an hour left of this. And this book has been hyped up so much by Mika from Mika August, so I finally decided to pick it up because it's like one of her favorite books and she's always talking about it. I feel like she's gotten so many people to read this book. So here I am. I'm almost done with this book. I have to say it is really, really good and really worth the hype. It's about our main character, Brie. She goes to UNC Chapel Hill and she discovers there are these secret societies. It's kind of like a urban fantasy based on the King Arthur legend. It's really, really good. The writing's really good. I have to say recently I DNF'd Ninth House and basically what I was expecting from Ninth House or what I wanted from Ninth House, I'm getting in this book. So I'm loving it. I should be finishing this like very soon, like definitely by the end of today I'll be done with this one. My current physical read I'm almost done with also and it's called We Are the Ashes, We Are the Fire. This is by Joy McCulloch. Joy McCulloch was actually the author of Blood Water Paint which is a book that I wanted to read a couple years back and this one's told in half first half prose and just like the normal narrative style of writing. It's about this girl named Mariana and her older sister Noor has just recently been assaulted. So trigger warning for assault and rape. It takes place after the whole trial and everything like that. And Mariana really communicates to the world through her writing and through speaking out. She is a writer on her high school newspaper and she's very much someone who like feels a need to express herself through speaking out and writing. And sometimes she gets in trouble for that because it's not the right place or the right time, which I think is so messed up. A lot, I relate a lot to Mariana and a lot of her writing. She also does kind of her own writing on the side. And so all of the poetry that's written in this book is kind of her own writing, which is really, really cool. I'm absolutely loving this book a lot. So after I finish those two books, the next audiobook that I plan on listening to is actually Homegoing by Ya Gyasi. I was going to listen to A Court of Silver Flames once I finished Legendborn, but then my hold for Homegoing finally got released. So I really do need to squeeze in Homegoing before I listen A Court of Silver Flames. I know I'm super late to listening to A Court of Silver Flames, but honestly, I don't want to rush reading that book because I know once I read that book, I'm just going to want to read the next book and I'm going to have to wait, who knows, a year, two years, who even knows with Sarah J Mass these days. But yeah, Ya Gyasi, I actually have her other book. I got it in a book of the month box. Transcendent Kingdom. So I kind of want to read Homegoing first because that's one of her more backlisted titles before I move on to Transcendent Kingdom. I think I want to read The Search, The Avatar The Lost Airbender, The Search graphic novel after I finish reading We Are the Ashes, We Are the Fire because I recently read The Promise this month. I wanted to save this one for next month, but I just can't. This comic is about exploring what happened to Zuko's mom and all of that stuff. So I'm really, really excited for this one. Also planning to pick up Infinite Country by Patrice Angle. This came in my book of the month box from last month as well. Uh, this one's a short book. It's about immigration. Those are my reading plans. Comment down below what you guys are currently reading. I would love to know. This morning, it's currently 10 a.m. and I'm gonna do some editing. Yesterday, I missed uploading a vlog. It was like the first time in a long time where I haven't uploaded a video on a Sunday or a Wednesday. It was so weird. I didn't do it, you know, of my own volition. The reason why was because I bought Final Cut Pro on Friday and I thought that it would be automatic, like it would just automatically be added to my computer. But no, it took a few days for it to come and it finally this morning popped up in my email that it was available. But I really wanted to wait to edit last week's vlog until I got Final Cut Pro. I kind of just made the decision that I would rather wait 
for Final Cut Pro to come and for me to take my time with editing it and get a good vlog up than like scramble and rush and edit it on iMovie when I could just wait a little bit and edit it on a better software. So I'm gonna start playing around with Final Cut Pro this morning and try and get that vlog edited. I have pretty much the whole day. I work later tonight so I'm hoping that I can get this vlog edited by tonight so then I can post it tomorrow. And while I'm working on the rough cut of it, I should be able to start finish listening to Legendborn. I'm kind of still getting used to the new angles in here with the new rearranging of my room, but I just made some coffee and you guys, if you haven't tried making coffee where you put cinnamon in it, try it. It is so good. If you guys have been seeing my like recent vlogs, I've been obsessed with the new Starbucks shaken espresso, brown sugar shaken espresso drink. I was trying to figure out like what part of the flavor I loved so much about it besides the fact that it's made with like mostly espresso shots. And I realized it's the cinnamon. So I tried putting some cinnamon and I'm not going back. I just finished listening to Legendborn and the ending was incredible. I understand why Mika loves this book so much. One of the things that this book does so excellently is intertwining history into this like urban fantasy. It deals with a lot of generational trauma and Brie being black and just tying in slavery and the history of slavery and black oppression in America is just done so, so well. There were just a lot of reveals too at the end that really made this book come around for me. Like I was enjoying it. There were definitely some slow moments in the middle towards the end so much stuff just went down i'm so excited for the sequel to come out i don't know when it's going to be coming out i hope sometime soon because i really want to find out what happens next i can't believe this is tracy dion's debut novel that's insane to me like what an amazing first debut novel all right so with that i'm starting my new audiobook home going i don't think i gave you guys a synopsis of what this book was about because i kind of low-key forgot what this book was about myself for some odd reason, I was expecting Homegoing to be a literary fiction book. I think because her other book, Transcendent Kingdom, is literary fiction. So when I started it and it was like taking place in like 17 something, I was confused. But I'm gonna read the description. It's by a Ghanaian author, which is really, really cool. Homegoing heralds the arrival of a major new choice in contemporary fiction. Two half sisters, Effia and Essie, are born into two different villages in the 18th century in 18th century Ghana. Effia is married off to an Englishman and lives in comfort in the palatial rooms of Cape Coast Castle. Unbeknownst to Effia, her sister Essie is imprisoned beneath her in the castle's dungeons, sold with thousands of others into the Gold Coast booming slave trade and shift off, shipped off to America where her children and grandchildren will be raised in slavery. There's obviously a lot to unpack there. All I really knew going into it was that it was a book that dealt with slavery and I feel like I haven't really read that many books from this time period in Africa so I'm really excited to see what this book is about. I've also heard really good things about this book in general so I have really high expectations. All right I am going to continue listening to that while I edit my vlog. Last night I stayed up until legit 3 a.m. editing last week's vlog because right as I was about to upload my vlog after editing for six hours, all of the files got corrupted. So I legit had a mental breakdown and went through the whole, should I just delete this vlog? Should I just not, you know, post this? Should I just wait like two weeks and post this? But then I just powered through and edited it. The second time around it was a lot 
easier and a lot faster because the first time around, right, like I haven't had Final Cut Pro for like almost a year now. So I was like trying to figure everything out again and basically learn how to edit while I was editing a vlog. So that's why it took so long the first time around. And the footage kept getting corrupt while I was editing. So I should have like taken that, you know, as a sign of like, hmm, something's not right and I need to like change the way that I'm going about editing this. But no, I can be very stubborn sometimes and when I start doing something a certain way, sometimes I just literally will not, you know, pivot. And I learned last night that sometimes you need to pivot and you can't be stubborn. And sometimes it's important to remember that the earlier you pivot, the better it is in the long term. Because if I had just realized, you know, maybe an hour or two into editing, like something's not working here. I need to change the way that I'm dealing with this footage. I could have saved myself so many hours, but in the end, I mean, it was worth it. I got the video up. I posted it this morning, so you guys should definitely go check it out. It's my finals week in my life college vlog. It was basically my vlog from last week. I got vaccinated and everything. I got my first dose of the vaccine last week. I had a fun time editing it despite the entire time the second time around me just being so mad at myself for not pivoting earlier anyways i have my day off this today so i'm actually going to be hanging out with a friend we're hanging out a little bit later in the day we're gonna go to irvine i'm really excited i haven't really gotten out all that much recently or just much in quarantine but i'm excited to do something fun and different and just like get out for a little bit you know it is my spring break after all so last night i would have finished reading my physical book but i keep on forgetting the title of it because it's kind of a long one but i would have finished reading that last night if i hadn't had all that editing trouble that i ran into but i should be able to finish it today i'm gonna probably have breakfast maybe Ooh, i'm gonna have breakfast and i think i'm gonna sit on the front porch and read while i drink my coffee that sounds so nice and like something that i actually have the time and luxury to do since it's spring break and i have no work so i think i'm gonna do that this morning honestly as a little like reset after last night i am always just obsessed with this foundation i cannot recommend it enough i talked about it in my like get ready with me my updated makeup routine video but it's the tom ford traceless soft matte foundation sometimes i even forget that this foundation is matte but it just gives me such a great base and i feel like it matches my skin tone so well like i love it absolutely i didn't like my makeup too much tomorrow yesterday because i used just concealer and it just was not it was not looking great but yeah i'm gonna do like a simple no makeup makeup look oh my gosh i just remembered i actually need to film the intro and outro to my room tour which is why i originally was gonna do my makeup now i remember so i'll probably do that after i have my little morning reading Putting foundation on like directly after skincare makes it like in person, at least when I'm looking in this like mirror, it makes it look like I'm not wearing foundation. Like it's super matte and it just doesn't feel like I'm wearing foundation, which I love because the Maybelline Fit Me foundation is like a good drugstore. Don't get me wrong. But when I wear it or when I would wear it, it just always, maybe it was also because I was wearing the dewy smooth kind and I never used like matte foundation but it always felt like I was dripping. Like my foundation would always like feel like a very thick moisturizer. Now I am doing my brows. I just comb out my brows now, honestly, because I'm not the best at brows and I kind of like a more natural look for the brows. Also, I showed this in my last vlog, but I love the combo of the lip liner that I got. It's the Wet n Wild lip liner. It's in the shade, I think it was called Coco Crush. Oh, Chocolate Cheat Day. Love this stuff, as well as the e.l.f. lip lacquer in the shade Mauve Glitz. I love it. What a phenomenon. And then I take this and put it in the middle and do like the ombre lip look. I love. You know what? I just realized that I did that 
before I even did my mascara. So we're gonna have to go back a couple steps. I was just so in a rush and so excited to show you guys that, but darker lip liner and then a like nude lip gloss or lip color for the middle and blend it out and it is such a nice combo. I'm literally putting this on to go have breakfast, but you can have fun with makeup sometimes. I just find putting makeup on really satisfying and I like putting makeup on more than I actually like having it on. My dad the other day was like making fun of us because, you know, sometimes my sisters and I will like actually like get fully dressed. It's usually Hanima who does it. She'll like get fully dressed and the other day she was like fully dressed and wearing shoes in the house. They were shoes that she's never worn outside. We don't wear shoes in our house but she was wearing I think it was her Mary Jane's to break them in and my dad just found it hilarious. He's like you guys miss in-person school that much that you guys are wearing shoes in the house and I'm like don't box us in one category because I'm not walking anywhere in the house with shoes. Sometimes you gotta get dressed and you know get fully ready to feel something you know. I'm gonna do any highlights lighter concealer today because I don't feel like it and again I'm like not doing anything crazy I'm just filming a quick intro and outro for my room tour which you guys should check out by the way let's go put on some more jewelry because I right now I just have this necklace on and I need my I need my earrings I need my rings I need the the whole stack here is my OOTD planning on wearing these with my Mary Jane's today because it's a very that kind of vibe this like argyle cardigan top is from Hattie Must Closet she let me borrow it so thank you to her because i'm getting sick of some of the tops in my closet that i keep on wearing and cycling over and over again i think this cardigan is super cute and it's like a really chill like it's gonna be like 60 degrees today so i'm wearing my silver hoops from forever 21 usual rings this one is from missouri this one in the middle this like croissant one is from amazon and if you guys watched the last vlog this new heart one that i got recently is from frazier sterling I finished reading We Are the Ashes, We Are the Flame, and I rated it a five out of five stars. I love the ending. I love this book so, so much. It has some great, great writing. I just felt like I connected so much to the main character and like so many of the messages going on in this book. It is so good. You guys should definitely pick it up. I highly, highly recommend it. I had such a fun time. I also feel like it's a great book, I feel like, for a readathon or if you're just trying to get through a book pretty quickly because half of it is told in verse so it's kind of easy to read, understand, and really easy to get through but also I feel like it just has so many important messages especially right now and with the conversations kind of going on right now in the media and stuff like that in terms of you know women's safety and all of that. Obviously there are trigger warnings for sexual assault and rape so definitely know those trigger warnings before you go into this book but if you guys are okay with reading material that does have mentions of that and covers those topics I think that it's a great book to read. I'm so happy that Penguin Teen sent it to me because it became one of my favorite books that I read this year. It's definitely going to be on my favorite books of 2021 list. I already know. So now I'm going to move on to reading Infinite Country. This one's really really short so I should be able to finish this maybe even today. I'm excited. I haven't heard any Thing about this book either I don't want to know too too much I just know like the tagline that popped up on book of the month so I'm kind of going into it blind
You guys, I am so excited. Today we are gonna be unboxing my first ever Luma Crate box. I'm kind of sad that it didn't come in like the iconic yellow box, but apparently they ran out of yellow boxes, so they just sent them in normal brown boxes. I've been waiting for this box for months, you guys. I ordered this back in like January. This is the special edition Aluma Crate box with a quart of silver flames. All I really know about it is it has a special edition cover of a quart of silver flames and it has special edition dust jackets for all of the other books in the series i paid kind of a hefty price for this box but i think it's gonna be worth it i love this series so much i love sarah j mass so much i don't buy a ton of special editions but when it's for my favorite authors you kind of gotta kind of gotta do what you gotta do so the first thing in here is the actual book this is the normal dust jacket this is it i still haven't read a quart of silver flames actually my sister has and she loved it so i'm really excited and i've also heard her really great things about it but i'm excited to read it sometime soon here is the little print that came with it the a quart of silver flames mini box and then the dust jackets are in here i got dust jackets actually from nerdy ink for my throne of glass books and they also kind of came in a similar wrapped situation so I guess I'm gonna have to fold these myself, but oh my gosh, these are stunning. Okay, this is what the Court of Silver Flames one looks like. So beautiful. I actually bought a regular edition of this so that like I could put this special edition dust jacket on this book and have it actually be a special edition. But for the rest of these, since I don't have duplicate copies of this series, I guess I'm just going to put these on my first editions that I have. The last thing that came in the box is a pin. Starfall enamel pin set. Star Eternal and Night Triumphant. This is so pretty. I can't wait to put these other dust jackets. They're absolutely stunning. I'm gonna go do that right now and then I'll show you guys what these look like. It took me a minute to figure it out, but like these are absolutely stunning and what's even better is they just look so good together just even just the spines first off you have a court of thorns and roses this is what the spine looks like this is what the back looks like on the front we have tamlin and lucian and it's a very like purple mauve vibe kind of book i love it i love how all of these books like all of these dust jackets they each each of their styles really especially like the hues that were chosen in the designs like match the vibe and the setting of the books a court of miss and fury this has to be like one of my favorites for sure like oh and you guys the gold foiling is stunning like wow just wow i also like like the art style of like how the characters look hand drawn it's so pretty it kind of reminds me a little bit of like the art style in how the king of elfheim learned to hate stories this is a court of wings and ruin we got our whole gang here i love this one this is the spine and then this is the back so beautiful a quarter frost and starlight i'm like a huge fan of like this has got to be one of my favorite covers it has three versions of pharaoh with different expressions and i just love this shade of like icy blue i love her gown but the icy blue is just absolutely stunning you guys wow i'm so impressed by all of this and then obviously you guys saw court of silver flames nesta and cassian this makes me really 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 excited to read this book i'm so excited i'm gonna go ahead and put these on my shelves if you guys want to check out the artist who designed all of these dust jackets i'll go ahead and have her instagram linked in the description box if you guys want to go check out her her work because this is stunning and she designed all of these dust jackets i'm a huge fan of this box i absolutely loved it it was worth the wait and worth the money so i'm super excited now i have all these other dust jackets and like 
<sighs> Originally, I thought that this box set would come with just like special editions of all of these books. Then towards the end, after I ordered it, I realized it was just dust jackets. So now I just have these. I'm gonna just go ahead and store these. I may just wait and see because sometimes they have sales for these books. Like they go on sale for really, really cheap or they're sold for really, really cheap. So if I do ever find the hardbacks on sale, I may repurchase them so I can have both sets on my shelf. Originally, I was gonna go to the beach and watch the sunrise, but your girl couldn't wake up that early. I put a little bit of too high expectations on myself because I would have had to wake up at 6 a.m., been out of the house by 6.15, and that just did not happen. I set my alarm and your girl went snooze. Anyways, we're gonna go to the beach regardless. It's not super hot of a day. Like, the sun is definitely out, so it could potentially get a little bit warmer. But I checked the weather today and it's gonna be, like, in the 60s for pretty much the whole day. So, I thought it'd be fun. I have my tote bag. I packed two books, two different books, just in case I finish the first one. I'm gonna try and read the search as well as if I finish and I still want to stay at the beach, infinite country, and we're gonna have a fun time. I'm going by myself, I'm not going with my sisters or friends or anything, because sometimes in life you just need to be a little independent and take yourself out sometimes. I've been wanting to go see like the sunrise or the sunset, we're doing neither today, but I don't know. I live six miles away from the beach and I've been craving going to the beach, so I want to get more into it. Every time I watch Ava Jules's vlogs, it just makes me want to go to the beach. to Earth Cafe and grab some brunch. I'm sweaty as hell, but I just picked up some brunch from Earth Cafe. I was in such a rush, I forgot to order oat milk, but I got an iced mocha latte. And Earth Cafe has the best avocado toast I've ever tasted in my life. So I obviously had to get some avocado toast. It basically has, um, I think it's feta cheese honestly and then tomatoes and it is just so good so i'm gonna actually go home because i really need to pee so i don't have to like look for a random bathroom i'd rather just pee at home but let's go ahead and taste test this mocha latte i would have gotten something more fun but they had such a long line and they were clearly in a rush and so i didn't have time to look at the menu Okay, I was afraid this is gonna be way too sweet because I forgot to be like half, you know, the syrup or the powder or whatever they use. But this is actually like the perfect level of sweetness. At the beach, I finished reading The Search and I rated it a five out of five stars. It was phenomenal. One of the things that I love so much about this book and just like the whole Avatar universe is the focus on sibling relationships. I love the dynamic between Zuko and Azula and Sokka and Katara and just like all of the familial relationships that this graphic novel focuses on is phenomenal. I love the development of everything. I love the exploration of the past. I loved all of the answers that we got and I loved the art style of these graphic novels. 
if you are a fan of the show in any capacity, the comics are a must read. You have to read them and can't wait to make my way through the rest of these comics. So now I'm going to eat my avocado toast and watch an episode of Orange. My sister and I started Orange yesterday and I think I'm on an episode like five or six of it. It's like 13 episodes and each episode is 20 minutes. It's this anime that is based on a manga that I've heard really great things about and I was originally going to read the manga first but my sister convinced me to just watch the show because she loves the show. It's about this girl who gets letters from her future self basically telling her that she needs to make certain life decisions in order to save the death of a friend. So I love it. It's really good and I just it's like a slice of life anime which I don't typically like the animes that I've seen before and that I've loved are not really slice of, slice of life animes. Attack on Titan, The Promised Neverland, Death Note, they're all kind of more fantastical or out there type concepts. So I'm watching that on Crunchyroll right now. Do you guys like my new earrings? I got them yesterday from Old Navy. They had like a buy one get one or a buy one get one 50% off sale. So I got some hoops. It has been eight months since I got my double piercing. So it's been like long past since I could have switched out my earrings, but my ears got infected like my piercing got infected a couple times so i really wanted to make sure it was like completely healed before i changed out the earring but i'm obsessed like this is the vision that i had in mind when i was going to get my doubles i wanted like same size small hoops eight months later we finally are here anyways i'm here to end off the reading vlog because i want to edit this vlog and get it up to update you guys on infinite country i did make a little bit of progress i'm on page 31 i should be able to finish this uh very soon i'm really liking this one it's like a short story as i said about immigration and it's a novel we basically follow our main character talia and we're kind of exploring immigration through her parents experiences and we're getting the background on her parents experiences but the opening scene she's at this like prison school from what i understand because she committed this crime and they have her at this school to kind of like atone since she was a first time offender but right now we're just going back into the history of her parents and it takes place in colombia get in all the deets i'm kind of still trying to get a grasp of like what the plot is about but one of the things that i love is that this book incorporates a lot of words in spanish which i studied like spanish for five years in high school and it's been such a long time so it's like kind of nice to be reading a book that incorporates Spanish again. It makes me want to take another Spanish class because it's been so long. I'm really enjoying that one. I'm also reading Homegoing. I'm loving that one. I'm about four hours into the audiobook and it is so good. It is as good as everyone has said that it has been. So I will update you guys on some of my reading. You guys need to stay tuned for my upcoming week in my lives because usually I will sneak in little reading updates in my college vlogs. If you guys stayed up until this point comment down below the snake emoji also if you guys are not already subscribed make sure to subscribe i would really appreciate it i will see you guys in my next video bye